Hi there, my name is David Batsoffin and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. During the month of October, I'm talking photography and specifically action photography with Simon McDonnell. Uh, and Simon joins me today all the way down from the Western Cape. Simon, how are you doing? Good morning. Hi, David, and uh, hello to your viewers. And thank you. It's great down here. A little, a little breezy, probably 40 knots, but uh, doing great. Great stuff. Now, action photography, Simon. Um, Pete, there is an old adage that says, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. And with action photography, people seem to believe that action has to be big. It's got to be like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie with weaponry and explosions and all that type of thing. But that's not the case, is it? Not at all. Um, in fact, I, I tell people all the time, uh, just because I uh, choose action photography doesn't mean I'm always wearing a crash helmet and uh, jumping into a helicopter. Uh, the, um, there's an action in, in, in everything, uh, waves, uh, uh, the wind, the way, it, the way it affects the trees. There's action everywhere. So you've just got to find it. So talking about finding it, I know that you've set up some images to talk us through in today's episode of In Conversation With. So uh, why don't you share your screen and, and let's take it from there. Sure, let's do that. And now with the miracle of modern technology, it should all work. Yes. <laughs> all right. okay. we, have, we have a screen. Yeah. So, so as I mentioned, you know, in the waves, this is a, obviously a, an aerial shot, um, a, a long exposure. I, I was playing around with a drone um, and uh, I enjoy the way that the long exposure captures the water moving in between the rocks. I got a couple of these and I think it works, you know. So although it's, uh, it's, it is definitely not a lot of adrenaline in here, it's still an action shot. Mm. I so, think that, that, that frozen water, is, well, frozen from a, a, a camera aspect uh, and not like being in the Arctic or the Antarctic, is, is spectacular. And you can play around with, your, with, your, um, with the timings um, to, to get more or less of that, that movement in, I, I should imagine, Simon. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, this is, I, I had some filters on the, on the drone here. Um, a couple of ND filters that I used. I think this one might have been a 256. Uh, and I probably shot at a second here. So you get the movement uh, in the waves, but of course the, the rocks are, are still uh, in focus. Mm. So, yeah, you've got to play, you have to know your equipment. You've got to, and, and the only way to, to, to know your equipment is to practice and to, to play around and try. Well, you know, I've said this before, Simon, and, and I'm glad you brought it up now, is that given the fact that it's digital and you can take, I don't know, whatever your card will hold and then dis, you know, dispose of two thirds or maybe even nine tenths of the, image of the images that you've taken without wasting any money, um, for people to go out and take one picture and go, that's it, is a bit ridiculous. I always overshoot. Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, I think when you're starting out, the most difficult, uh, uh, aspect is 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 ditching the photos that you think you might be able to salvage. Uh, <laughs> someone once said to me, "It's like shooting your kids." Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I must be honest. I'm very harsh on myself. Um, if, if a photo isn't up to scratch, it gets ditched. And yeah, uh, I'm interested in going back next month to try and fix it uh, in Lightroom or in Photoshop. In fact, I don't even have Photoshop. So. Um, yeah, I, I think you, you've got to practice and be prepared to, to ditch at yeah. least 90% of your work. <laughs> so, moving on. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I put this image in because I, th I think it's important to tell a story as well. Uh, people said to me, um, why didn't you crop out the, the, the railing at the bottom? I mean, if you crop that out, it's quite a nice image. But for me, the railing and those fenders and the life ring there, it's half the story, you know, yeah. that, that you that you're out there. It's a team. We're working together, um, and so that is part of the story. And, and I think that's one of the aspects I'll be touching on uh, over the course of, of of the month is is telling the story and, and how important that is. A photo is just a photo. 
um, and there are some beautiful photos. But I think if you're telling a story, you've achieved what you've set out to do. And then the other thing that is incredibly important when you're shooting horizons is make them level, people. Most modern DSLR cameras have some sort of leveling mechanism in it so that you know your horizon is straight. You don't want to have to come back. And, and somebody says, where is your C running off to? Yeah, that's uh, probably one of the, the very first lessons that I think they'll teach you if you do a photographic course is get that horizon level. Not always easy, let me tell you, on a, on a, on a, mo on a moving... Uh, <laughs> thank goodness uh, many of the post uh, programs like Lightroom uh, do allow you to straighten your horizon in post as well. But, uh, but try and get it right in camera. Okay, so what, I, as you say, that, that fender for me tells nine-tenths of the story. It really intrigues. And of course, also, if you look at the background of your image, you can see the land. So you can see how far out people actually are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I think there's more to it than just a picture of a boat. If, if you crop out the, uh, the railings and, and well, the, the, the boat that I'm on, it, uh, it's a nice picture of a Gemini, but it's not, uh, no. it's not telling a story. No, not at all. And, and I, I'll, talk, I'll touch on that a little bit more as we go through. Um, I'll just pull up images in general here. Here, obviously, the, the lightning shots. Uh, I loved them when I lived in, in Joburg. It was, uh, it was my favorite part of Joburg was the lightning storms. Sadly, uh, down here, we don't, don't get, get them. too many. So yeah. this was a... A very fortunate shot, I thought, um, from my balcony. And uh, I think what you've got to be careful of is with, with lightning is not to really blow it out of all proportion and yeah. overexpose. It's and, easier. All, and once again, Simon, uh, you mentioned safety. Um, don't do what I did uh, standing in, in Mulder's Drift on the top of a hill with my camera on a tripod in the middle of a lightning storm to get my first lightning images. I got 12 shots with everybody screaming at me, <laughs> you're going to get struck. <laughs> yeah. To which my response yeah. was, I'll just keep the shutter open. <laughs> yeah, safety is, is, of course, everything. And that's another aspect that I'll touch on. Um, probably in, in every, um, every program we do, I'll, I'll be mentioning safety. It's, it's right. critical. Um, so, where was uh, this taken? This is, a, this is an awesome shot. So this, uh, David, this is off Hout Bay. This is a place called Dungeons. Apparently oh, one of the um, top 10 dangerous uh, surf sites um, in the world. It's, it's up there. It's rated by the surfers, the big surfers. Um, what, uh, what these guys refer to is a matchbox. So what I should have had here was uh, a surfer in the picture because it's, it gives you the perspective. So they, yeah. they call this, this is the matchbox that you put them in there and it really does show the, the size of the wave. This particular one, I, I didn't because the, the, I had a, a customer in mind who wanted uh, this kind of photo um, for above, well, I think for their bedroom and, and they didn't want a surfer in there. They wanted the wave. So this is just the wave, but it is bigger than you would imagine. It looks like yeah. it's only a meter high. This wave is probably uh, four or five meters uh, in height. It's a, it's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> now, I'm um, assuming, Simon, with that one, that you were, standing, you were standing on the beach. No, not at all. I'm on a boat. Um, oh. So, so uh, when, when the waves are going to come through, the surfing community, uh, they obviously know, know uh, when these days are going to happen. And if you're very fortunate, you can uh, chat to one of the skippers who will take you out and you get out there and there's probably four or five photographic boats, each with uh, four or five togs on, and they kind of just potter around in, in, a, in a circle, <laughs> giving you a chance to get a shot. You get a shot and then you move on and you wait until your turn again and they, you come around. So it's quite a, a, quite a commercial little operation, but it's... Uh, <laughs> It's well worth it, and, and I just find that these days are too few and far in mm. between. They're, uh, they're, they're great. I, I would take a day off uh, from the office any day to get, to, to get out to see these waves. 
All right. I will move on uh, again. Uh, the action is not always at uh, blistering speeds, although these yachts, these uh, T-52s, they, they, the sound that you hear, these boats mm -hmm. are groaning and squealing, and uh, they do go very fast. But, of course, we're not talking Formula One here. But uh, the action is there, and, and half the time, the action isn't necessarily the yacht itself. It's what's happening on the deck. Yeah. It's uh, crews jumping around from side to side, uh, and the work that gets put into uh, a winning race is, is phenomenal. So um, something to look for if, you, if you're at the coast, if there's a yacht race happening, uh, get down there. Get, this is from the shore. This is from um, uh, just off Sea Point. And this is how close they come in. I don't think that I was using a, a very long zoom here at all. Um, but they do come in close to the shoreline. So it's well worth going to uh, going down to the to the beach to to watch the yacht races if they are happening in your area. Great stuff. Um, and then, I of think, course, if you're in Sea Point, that is the. Oh yeah. <laughs> these are the. These that's are the, the seminal shot in Sea Point. It really and truly is. Yeah. So again, I wanted to to say that you know you can capture the ocean you can capture the waves but again by leaving in the railings and that uh, bench i think it adds to the story you know you besides the leading lines um you, you're capturing a little bit of the story by leaving things in there again I, yeah. I agree with you uh, like that as well you've got the railings in the foreground you've got the railings disappearing into the waves at the back which which also makes it spectacular and as you say you could have cropped you could have shot it without the railings in the front, but I don't think it would have done the image justice at the end of the day from a storytelling point of view. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's kind of, although although we're talking action, I think it's important that there's still a, a story uh, yeah. involved. That's, that's what we're here for. Um, but I think timing. also, Simon, uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that photography is subjective. So what yeah. you and I might think is spectacular um, and, and I have issues with judges of photographic competitions. I've been on the, the sharp point of comments that are not right. And you, you can't fight it. Um, sure. But so, so to each his own. Uh, I do like this image and I, I like the fact that you've left the foreground in. Just a pity about the name on the side, you know, if you could get rid of that, of, <laughs> of the logo, much better. <laughs> If you buy the image, I'll take the logo out. It's that easy. <laughs> I told that to somebody years ago. I was shooting uh, balloons, uh, hot air balloons. And I got one particular shot. And the owner of the balloon company loved the image. And, and I knew that they might. So I'd, I'd put my logo right across the image. Um, and they came back. They found me and they said, look, we love your image. How do we get rid of the watermark? And I said, it's very simple. You put money in my bank account. <laughs> And it disappears. <laughs> no, she didn't like it. <laughs> uh, man. Uh, I mean, it's there really. I, I put them in. I mean, there's a lot of uh, debate over watermarks. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It's obtrusive. It's in the side, I think. Yeah. Uh, it, no, it's a remark. I was, you know? I was just joking. It wasn't a serious comment at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It I doesn't that. detract I, from. Yeah. The, Look, I, I hear what you're saying with the subjective. I, I remember, I can't remember who it was, but I do remember distinctly being asked, how many photographers does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer is 40. Uh, one to change the light bulb and 39 to tell you how they would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly that. Yeah. I think it's important, uh, you know, you take a photo and who has to like it? Well, you do, unless you're, of course, doing it for a client, in which case they do. But uh, it's definitely subjective. If you like it, you've achieved your goal. Um, so we'll move on. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about timing. Um, here, this was a, a tremendous day for me. This was uh, in the middle of level five lockdown, um, where I'd heard that the orca were coming into into Simon's Bay or into into uh, Simon's Town area, and um, well, 
just prior to this, I'd seen, I think it was a caracal walking the streets or a photo of a caracal walking the streets uh, of Simonstown and someone had posted penguins walking in the streets. Yeah. And I, uh, it, there's a story here. So I got hold of the Simonstown boat company, Dave Hurwitz, and uh, he had the, the right permits for taking media out to sea uh, if, uh, during, during lockdown. And I had all the paperwork necessary to get going. So like, um, like a couple of pirates, we, uh, we snuck down to the, to the jetty and launched his boat and went out and captured these incredible creatures um, during the very, I think it was the very first week or two of, of lockdown where it, the streets were like a ghost town. So it was quite incredible. But the timing that I'm talking about isn't necessarily about the lockdown. It's about the fact that you can get a great picture of, of an orca doing anything. But if you had the light and that spray from the blowhole that it just, uh, they just breathed out, we, I think it, it adds to it. And it again, does indeed. You know, just the, the light there, the capturing yeah. of that really just makes the photo and tells a story. Um, these two animals are referred or they're known as uh, port and starboard because contrary to popular belief it's not just animals in captivity that uh, have collapsed dorsal fins these two also have uh, collapsed dorsal fins one leading to the left and one leading to the right hence the names port and starboard so uh, they uh, they've become fairly regular visitors uh, we see them on a on a regular basis now and uh, it is quite incredible uh, I have another another shot of this. Uh, this is starboard, and uh, again, I think it's important sometimes to get a wider shot. You know, mm. just because uh, you know you you're right there, you can get the close up. But I think the you want to tell the story. You want to tell people where you are. Well, there's no denying that this is just off, uh, just south or just north of Cape Point, um, Judas Point. I think it's is the name of this uh, peak, and it sort of just tells a bit more about the picture than than uh, you're not you're not shooting it in the in Antarctica somewhere. Yeah, it's low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think there's just another of the storm uh, again, uh, a wider shot. I think mm -hmm. the gentleman on the right hand side. I I think that's part of the pick. You know, just it's, standing watching. You know, I could have zoomed in and. Chaos. Got, yeah, and I, I think also, the... Simon, if you if you go one step further, fir firstly, it's in black and white, which changes yeah. the, the whole story. And then if you look in the sky above that block of flats, you've got two two gulls, I take it, that are circling there. And that also, yeah. I mean, you could have you could have taken them out of the image, but again, I think it just adds something else for your eye to to look at. It's not drawn to immediately. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's part of the whole, and I think that's very important. That's it. That's the story. Is, the, is yeah. there's so much? To, I mean, even the the sign in the front there, danger. Well, there it is. You can <laughs> see the danger. <laughs> All right. Um, a little less action, but there's still action. I mean, again, the uh, yeah, a shot of a yacht. Uh, some people might like that on its own, but with the birds flying across, it just adds to a little. And uh, and I would certainly call that an action shot. Yeah. So I, again, I like it. Um, and then looking at some tight crops, again, it's not uh, filled with adrenaline, but a, but a little bit of action. Um, it's not just about the broader uh, sea rescue aspect, but the comms. You know, this is a, a story we wanted to tell here was about communication. Mm -hmm. um, so so picture of the radio. And, uh, and and the story is there. Well, that this speaks for itself. I mean, you've got yeah. action, front, middle, and background. Yeah, I think what I wanted to say here was, uh, you know, shots of Table Mountain from the Table View uh, Bloberg area. They're famous. I mean, that's that's the 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 typical tourist shot of, of Table Mountain. Sometimes with the tablecloth, uh, sometimes without it. Uh, and there's lots of photos in that bay of of these uh, kite borders. But if you can tie it all together and Why have not? a kite border in your shot, I think uh, that's the way to go. And, and that's kind of what I was looking for here. 
Um, I wasn't too happy that I got the shadow there at the front on the beach, but hey, that's unavoidable. So it stays. Um, but yeah, tell the story. It's obviously Cape Town and it's obviously a, a great place to go kiteboarding. And again here. Um, Where were you, Simon, in a basket? <laughs> no, I was quite safe. I was standing, I think, on a balcony for this shot. Uh, okay. um, one of the sea rescue bases. Uh, this was during some training with the Air Mercy Service uh, team. Um, that's Alicia, I think. Or I could be wrong. But, um, but again, getting the tight shot, I think it's important that you get the rotor and mm. the spinning rotor. We'll talk more about that in one of the aviation days. Um, You'll see a lot of photos online of helicopters and aircraft in, in flight. Um, people take them with their phones and of course you can't adjust things. And you've got this rotor that's st standing dead still. And it looks as though you've taken a picture of the helicopter on the, on the ground and photoshopped it into the sky. Yeah. I think if you want, want to take a picture of an aircraft uh, that has wings, it's got propellers, then take the propellers with a little bit of motion blur. Yeah. Helicopters, that rotor's got to be moving. That's the action that you're yeah. looking for. It's just um, a part of the story. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, this is not taken on the ground with the uh, helicopter stopped and th th it's not a posed shot. Mm. Uh, that's that's a, an external load operator actually using a hoist and, and lifting a patient. So tell the story, but you can get tight, you can get right in, but you can still have some action in there. And I think that's what I wanted to say with this shot. Um, and again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's often, it's the crop that you use. I mean, here's a shot that I like. It's a, a good action shot um, of a team from Station 16. Um, they're on a, what we call a rescue runner. It's a, a jet ski, a wave rider and that's the, the the rescue board behind them but if you saw the original shot you can see that it's not quite as action-packed yeah. as you might think you know the it's a very tiny little wave that they look that they've hit and it's just the spray coming through so i cropped it and i think that the the end image where you've got uh, the the foam filling the the frame yeah. works a little better than that than than that for instance so a lot of it is about your your crop but wide can work and if it doesn't then try the tight I, I think it's best that you get both again this is what I was saying about the rotors get some movement the perfectionists out there will tell you that you've got to have a full disc uh, I can tell you that with this particular helicopter if you wanted a full disc you'd be shooting it around uh, 1 15th um, and that's not easy because we can't use tripods and things around helicopters. We, we, hand -held, we, we do handheld. So right. uh, an Oryx helicopter, definitely 1 15th will give you a, a full disc. But to me, if there's some movement, if you can see that that rotor is moving, that's good enough. Um, I, well, good enough for me, good enough for the clients. They, they, um, they don't necessarily need a full disc to, to make it an action shot. Um, I, hear, I is, hear what you're saying, and it's, it's, again, it's, as we were discussing earlier, Simon, it's subjective. You say they're yeah. experts. What makes them experts that somewhere along the line somebody said you have to have a full disc on your rotor? No, you don't have to. As long as it tells the story, it's working. And as long as the That's client it. is happy, it's worked. End of story. Yeah. True enough. True enough. Um, and, and just again, uh, talking timing. Here, I mean, cat, a catcher at a baseball game, um, the ball going into the mitt would be a great shot, but uh, the ball bouncing out of the mitt with that, with that dust um, from the mitt, to me, that just made a much better yeah, that shot. In, that does uh, indeed. I always prefer it. Here's, this is, in fact, this is my son. Uh, again, the dust makes the shot to me. The, the, the catch and the ball, well, that's one aspect, but I think that the, the dust is where yeah. the action comes in. And that's, you know that's that. I think, what, what people need to look out for. And I, I think I've said this before to, to others. Um, in today's, and you said it in your introduction last week, that everybody is a photographer. Everybody who has a camera phone is now a photographer. And you need, if, you need to make your images 
different. They need to stand out. And this is yeah. exactly what that cloud of dust does. It changes the story that's being told. Because if there wasn't dust there, you wouldn't know where the ball was. Exactly. We now know that the ball is in his glove because okay. there's dust. Um, yeah. And also about getting the, the, the background right so that you don't see everybody, you know, the fences and all that type of thing clearly. It's a stunning image. Yeah. I hope you pay. I hope you paid your boy um, money for that picture for posing for you. Non-stop. It's never <laughs> ready. <laughs> uh, okay, this this I liked because you know this was during the the August uh, as the as the crowds come through uh, Simon's Town. Um, these aren't the race leaders, you can tell because they're smiling. Um, but I, I love this one because I managed to capture the lady with her smile, uh, sort of leading these three guys, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and she was the she was the one that I managed to capture in focus, and it just worked for me. Obviously, it's a panning shot, um, but yeah, a little bit of fun, uh, and uh, and well, I got a lot of photos from the August. You can get some tremendous action. I should imagine so. I should imagine yeah. so. Um, what an event. Simon, is, is that the last image that you have? Can we go back to full screen? Um, I think we're, we're running out of time. Do you want to pick, you want right. to pick one more? There we, one go. More. there we go. Yeah. Just because I can. <laughs> that Just because was one of my you favorite. Can. A young orca cough. And, uh, I love that image. <laughs> I just liked it because it's with mom. Yep. And with, and with uh, foam coming out uh, or uh, a spot coming out the blowhole, which is important. Yeah. That's it. Timing. Great. So that's it's it. It's all yeah, about timing. Drop that down. There we go. Simon, that was absolutely spectacular. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, it's now given me a uh, cause to, to grab my gear. I don't know where I'm going to find this, but I'm going to go and look for some action during the course of the week. And maybe I can do it as homework. And maybe there are other people out there um, who will watch this. And if you'd like to, to send us your images, we're not going to critique them, but uh, I'll put them up on, on my Facebook page. You can um, email them to me at david at travelandthings.co.za if you're so desirous. Um, if you want to ask Simon questions or you want to see Simon's work, um, click Simon um, is his Instagram account. Uh, he does have Facebook, but that's mainly... For his family. Uh, he might not respond to you there, but go and have a look at his work uh, at his work on Instagram. Simon, just as a matter of interest, are those images, some of those images for sale? Should people want to buy them? Sure. Look, I mean, I, I'm always open to that. If someone was looking for a, a high-res image, uh, we can we could certainly look at that. Great stuff. Um, my guest on uh, in conversation with for the entire month of October is Simon McDonald. We'll be talking uh, action photography. Simon, what are we talking about next Saturday? Uh, I think that next Saturday is helicopters, uh, working in and around helicopters. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll have some fun with that. Great stuff. Thanks once again for joining me. I look forward to our helicopter chat next week. All the best. Thank you, David.